DC lesson number 10. This is capacitors and time constant circuits, a little practical demonstration to further embed our understanding of how capacitors operate. So um, here are the objectives of our lesson. I'll just quickly turn on my, um, my pen. So we're going to want to look at and how we connect an RC circuit together. Then we're going to develop a graph that demonstrates the relationship between voltage, current and time, both from the perspective of charging the capacitor and discharging a capacitor, both through the resistance. Then we're going to determine the time constant and compare it with the calculated values to see whether everything adds up. Then at the end, we're going to demonstrate the relationship between capacitance and voltage for capacitors that are connected in series. And then finally, our last little bit of the demo is um, demonstrating the increasing value of capacitance as capacitors are connected in parallel. Our little risk assessment, uh, electric shock is, uh, needs direct supervision, but it's relatively low because we're not going to exceed 10 volts, so it's ELV. Just got to be aware of burns that there might be components that get warm and trips and falls with leads, etc. Make sure I keep everything well up off the floor. So here's our basic circuit. We're going to have a power supply operating at 10 volts, and you'll see a picture of that shortly. We've got a switch so we can control when. Um, things stop and start. We've got an ammeter to measure current. There's our current. Our resistor R1 is at 100k. We have our 470 microfarad capacitor in series. And then we have a voltmeter measuring volts across the capacitor. And basically, I didn't put, bother putting switch 2 in because I'm actually going to do the current and the voltage both at the same time using the magic of digital photography. So here's our basic circuit. So let me just quickly uh, explain the physical circuit. I've just shown you the circuit diagram. Here's our power supply plus and minus supply, plus on the one end of the circuit and our zero volts or our minus at the other end. We have our switch, which allows us to control the circuit. I have my current, my ammeter here. And again, it just sits in the circuit here. I've clipped it in with a couple of alligator clips. I've got my resistor R1 in here at 100K then my 470 microfarad capacitor here connected back down to supply. Across the capacitor itself, you can see the plus and the minus leads, and that's connected to my voltmeter. Then in between both, I've got my um, smartphone set up as our timer so we can actually track time in seconds. So before we get started though, um, I did a couple of uh, experiments to make sure everything was going to work as I had expected it to work. And you'll notice here I've put a short across the capacitor just temporarily. What I'm doing here is I'm just ensuring that that capacitor is at zero volts. I'm completely discharging the capacitor to make sure it is starting from nothing. Okay, let's get on with it. So we've turned the switch on. Well, maybe not quite. So here we are on the first slide here at zero seconds. I haven't closed the switch. The switch is still open. So we're still open here. There's no current, no time, and no voltage. Then the next time is I close the switch and I quickly jump to my camera and take a picture, which best I can do is three seconds. So at three seconds, our current is at 
0.1 of a milliamp and our voltage is at 0.2 of a volt so you can see that here clearly on the displays next we come down here to 31 seconds I actually took a photograph every 10 but it was just easier to display it every 30 so every th at 30 seconds you can see our current has now dropped to 0.06 and our voltage has gone up to 4.4 then at the 60 second mark over here well 60 seconds being one minute our current is dropped to 0.36 so it's come down and our voltage has continued to rise now at 6.8 volts here so to summarize that I've simply built this uh, little table so zero time three seconds 31 and 60 and I've simply recorded all the currents and the voltages and certainly can demonstrate that the current is dropping as the voltage increases which is what we need to understand as the capacitor charges our next picture is a continuation of the process so now we're at one minute 30 seconds or one and a half minutes which is 90 seconds we're down to 0.023 and 8.147 volts then we move across to 120 seconds and we've dropped even further at 0.15 of a milliamp and we're at 8.88 volts then finally at 150 seconds almost done 0.01 of a milliamp and 9.3 volts and then finally at the three minute mark so at three minutes or 180 seconds later we're at 0.007 almost no current flowing now very close to none and we've got 9.72 we're not far off our full 10 volts so again I've just summarized I've just brought forward the four results from the previous slide and the four results on this slide and again we can see this exponential decay of the current so the current is decaying like this and the voltage is rising like this so let's have a look at our time voltage curves and all I've done is plot the information that we have got from the little experiment that we did so I've done up here is I've calculated the time constant so the time constant is R times C so it's a hundred thousand times 47 microfarads so our time constant or one time constant is worth 47 seconds so I've gone along the horizontal of my graph for the time constants and I just put in the times so I've got 47 seconds here twice that is 94 three times that is 141 and four times that is 188 so there are time constants one two three and four got the blue curve is the voltage and the red curve is the current on the left hand side I've got percentage but I've also put here it also represents 10 volts so 100% is 10 volts 50% is 5 volts 10% is point is 1 volt done the same with current so all the way up 100% is 0.2 50% is going to be 0.1 and 10% is going to be 0.01 no, 0.02 in fact so that gives you some idea so what we've done here is we've said well we are at 50 seconds which is close enough to 47 as our first time constant and if we project back we should it should project back at about oh, 47 is going to be about 62 percent or 6.2 
volts. Not far off, 6.2 volts at our first time constant. Second time constant is at 94 seconds and our nearest is 90, which is pretty, pretty damn close. So we project back and we're going to be somewhere around about 85 or maybe 8.5 volts and we're not far off that at about 8.2 next our next time constant is 141 so 150 is our closest So a little bit less than that, so somewhere in here, so it's going to be about 92, maybe 93%, and of course look at this, 9.38 volts. So you can see the voltages are corresponding pretty well spot on to our curve. And then finally our fourth time constant, we measured it at 180 seconds and at 188 is the fourth time constant that we calculated and again you can see very 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 close get my pen on so you know it's right up in here at you know about 97 percent or 9.7 so you can see the voltages have followed the exponential curve per perfectly as predicted by our time constant curve. So now let's do it for current. So at one time constant, there's the current. And if we project back at 42, yep, about 0.04 of a milliamp. So I'm doing exactly the same thing again. I'll just put my pointer on when I find it. There we go. And projecting back to that point there and we're getting about that value do the next one at 94 and what's that about 12 percent of 0.2 would be 23 10 percent of it would be um, 0.02 exactly and we said it's just a bit above that's about 12 percent of it so 0.023 spot on at two time constants at three time constants we're going to be down about five percent which would be about 0 0.010 which it is so again we expected that as a percentage of two milliamps about five percent of the two it's going to be about 0 0.01 and then finally our fourth time constant puts our current at so close to nearly zero but very very close to zero and there it is at 0 0.07 done and dusted so our time versus current and voltage demonstrates that the uh, RC network does decay the current decays exactly as expected and the voltage builds exactly as expected so let's now move on to capacitors in series reasonably straightforward little couple of experiments here we've simply taken a 100 microfarad capacitor and put it in series with a 470 i've calculated what that should be so it's one on t total Capacitance is 1 on C1 plus 1 on C2. That's our standard formula. So that's 1 on 100 on 1 on 470. All inverted back and puts us at 82.5 microfarads. And of course, can we check that? Yes, we can. Our, our smallest capacitor is 100 microfarads and that's smaller than that, so we're probably spot on. So we've, we've calculated our capacitance at... 8.2 microfarads. So let's move over now to the photograph and here you can see our 100 microfarads and our 470 in series with each other. I've got my multimeter set to measuring capacitance and my meter says it is 
86.4 and I don't think you can quite read it but it says microfarads so we're measuring 86.4 we calculated 82.5 and my capacitors were um, plus and minus 10 percent so allowing for a bit of fluctuation in my, my accuracy of my meter and in the value of the capacitors spot on spot on there we've demonstrated quite clearly that capacitors connected in series you have to add up the inversions to get the value of capacitance so what happens when we're doing the measurement of the voltages so I put the two capacitors now in series and I put a nice neat 10 volts around it just to make the uh, the maths easy so here's my 10 volt power supply my 100 microfarads and my 470 the larger voltage should be seen across the smaller capacitor and we're getting 6.74 and across the 470 we're getting our 3.35 so that's where those values are coming from just simply read off the meters and of course if we add 6.79 to 3.35 it comes back very very close to our 10 volts on our power supply so the voltages around a series capacitor circuit add up to the applied voltage so volts total does equal the volts on C1 plus the volts on C2. Now we move to our capacitors in parallel. And here we're just connecting up ca capacitors in parallel and measuring the capacitance. So here we again, we have our 470 and our 10 microfarad capacitor and on the first picture there you can see I've connected them up now in parallel I've then taken a meter reading and it's telling me 602 microfarads is what or 600 microfarads close enough but if you actually add them up it's 570 so again allowing for the plus and minus 10 percent in the capacitance values themselves it's certainly close enough demonstrating the two capacitors together in parallel you just add the capacitance so C total does equal C1 plus C2 plus etc 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 now just to be absolutely certain of it we've now in the second photograph added a third capacitor now I only had a 10 microfarad capacitor so it's not going to make a huge difference so I added a C3 at 10 microfarads and my reading has now jumped up to 612 so we've got the reading has jumped up to 612 it should have been around about um, 580 but again allowing for the plus and minus 10 percent of each of the capacitors because there's a plus and minus 10 here and a plus and minus 10 here and a plus and a minus 10 allowing for that little bit of difference basically we can see that by adding in the third capacitor this reading has gone up by the appropriate 10 microfarads so have we achieved our objectives so connect an RC circuit capacitor and resistor in series we certainly did that we then had to develop a graph that demonstrates the relationship between voltage current and time and we did that from time constant 1 through to time constant 4 and demonstrated that the percent increase in the voltage 
and the percent decrease in the current were just as the graph predicted. So our time constants work. Step three was to determine the time constant and compare this with the calculated values. So we calculated the time constant at about 47 seconds and applied that through our graph and it was very, very close. In actual fact, it was so close to me it was spot on. So we were able to demonstrate that the time constant is equal to R multiplied by C. Then we demonstrate the relationship between capacitance voltage for capacitors connected in series. So the capacitance decreased, that was the important part of that experiment. Capacitance decreased and the voltage drop was inversely proportional. So the big capacitor had the smallest voltage. The smallest capacitor had the biggest voltage. That's what we mean by inversely proportional. Then finally, we demonstrated the increasing value of capacitance for the capacitors connected in parallel was simply proved. So we clearly demonstrated for our three capacitors that C total was equaling C1 plus C2 plus C3 allowing a little bit of give and take for our plus and minus 10% on each of our capacitors. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our final prac in DC. Dr. Ken signing off.